I get this question quite a lot uh, as a real estate investor and realtor myself from friends, home buyers, uh, and many people that work with me. Is it better to buy or rent? And how can I see the difference? How can I calculate which one is better? In this video, I discuss the decision of renting versus buying a home from a little different perspective. Many people believe that if you can purchase a home with a mortgage payment equal or less what they're paying in rent, then buying is a really good decision to make. However, this way of thinking is flawed because comparing a mortgage payment to rent is not an apples to apples comparison. To make an accurate decision between renting or buying, we need to evaluate the total unrecoverable cost of each. This may sound complicated, but I've simplified it to a simple calculation. I am Amedeo, a portfolio manager of a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio. And in this video, I will give you a straightforward way to think about the rent versus buy decision. Before I introduce the sunk cost or unrecoverable cost rule, I need to explain the assumptions that went into this video. An unrecoverable cost is a cost that you pay with no associated residual value. In other words, it is a cost that you pay that you will never get back. When we talk about the total unrecoverable costs as a renter, it is very easy. 100% of the rent you're paying to the landlord, you will never get back. The only thing you get is the right to live in the house. However, for homeowners, it's a little bit more complicated. Homeowners have a mortgage payment that may feel like rent, making it an easy number to compare to the former. But this comparison is not meaningful because a mortgage payment, by the most part, is not an unrecoverable cost. The unrecoverable cost for a homeowner includes stuff like taxes, insurance, and cost of capital which is partially represented by the mortgage payment. Let me explain. To compare the cost of renting versus owning, we need to consider property taxes first. On average in America, property taxes fluctuate around 1% of the cost of the value of the house. Another cost that many people talk about is maintenance costs. While it is very difficult to calculate on average how much it would cost you to maintain your house, which could be replacing a roof, replacing the toilet, and doing some other repairs, if you look at investment websites, on average, investors talk about 1% to maximum 2% of the value of the house per year. And in this video, we're going to talk about 2%. We want to be more conservative and make a worst case scenario for a homeowner. The last and most important piece of the sunk cost or unrecoverable cost rule is the cost of capital, which has two components, the cost of debt and the cost of equity. Most homeowners finance the purchase of their home using a mortgage and the interest on that mortgage represents an unrecoverable cost. The interest on a mortgage is what you pay to the bank for a service of lending you money to buy a house. For instance, let's say a homeowner puts down 20% of the value of the house and has to pay the remaining per 80% throughout the next 30 years with a mortgage. The 80% that has been financed with a mortgage will result in interest costs. In April 2019, on average, the mortgages had an interest rate of 3%. Fast forward today, unfortunately, now mortgages are twice as much. We are around the 6% mark, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. Now, this is the cost of debt. The other side of the cost of capital is the equity side. When you put 20% down on a home, you're investing in a real estate asset. Alternatively, you could have continued renting a house and use that 20% down payment to invest in the stock market or an interest-bearing savings account. This alternative creates what we call an opportunity cost, the cost of avoiding the opportunity of investing the money somewhere else, which is a real economic cost incurred by the homeowner. And this is why we're going to include this cost into this calculation. To estimate the opportunity cost, we need to come up with uh, an idea of what to expect uh, in other investments, as well as the real estate investment. A good example is taking the S&P 500 historical returns. We know that historically the S&P 500 yielded around 12% a year throughout pretty much the history of the entire index. Houses, on the other hand, if we take the same historical time frame, have been appreciating at a rate of around 4.5%. Here's where it gets very tricky though. I saw other videos making a more basic version of this calculation and then using the difference between the appreciation of housing versus the appreciation of the S&P 500 to create this cost of equity. What many of these videos are missing out is the fact that when you're buying a home, you're using what we call leverage, meaning you're investing your down payment of 20%, but you're getting the return on the full amount of the house. Let me explain. If you were to put that down payment in an investment account and keep on renting, 
the return you will be making would be on the investment account. If you have $50,000 and you know that it will make 10% a year, you will make five grand a year. In real estate, on the other hand, the return you're making is on the entire value of the house, even though you're just using 20% of that to buy the house. So if you have the same $50,000 we just talked about and you use it as a 20% down payment, to buy a $250,000 house. The 4.5% return I mentioned earlier, historical return of real estate, is calculated on the value of the house and not only on your down payment. So yes, you're using 50K, but your return is calculated on 250K, meaning that 4.5% return would yield you this number instead of this number. Let me make another example. If you put a 20K down payment on a $100,000 property and the property increases by 5%, your 20K down payment did not make a 5% return. It made a 25% return. As 5% of 100,000 is 5K. And the return of $5,000 on an investment of $20,000, which is your down payment, is a 25% return. So if on average, a house can make you around 25% return, considering those original historical numbers we just talked about and the effect of what we just mentioned, which is leverage, and the stock market has on average a 12% return, we don't have an opportunity cost, we have an opportunity gain. Because your money is better invested on average in real estate in terms of returns than the stock market. Because real estate has leveraged the stock market unless you know what you're doing has not. Of course, this is not always the case. Every single market across the US has some different numbers. So now that we know the cost of taxes, the cost of repairs, the cost of a loan, and the opportunity cost of gains and losses on the down payment, we can finally make a practical example. Supposedly, you live in an area where homes appreciate by 2% a year. So we mentioned 4.5%, but let's make an example of 2% a year. And you're looking at houses for $300,000. Your tax and repair costs will be around $9,000. Considering you're putting 20% down, so 60K, your loan will be $240,000. With a 6% interest rate that we have right now, your cost of capital on the debt side is $14,400. Your total cost without considering what we just talked about, so the opportunity cost of gaining or investing somewhere else, your total cost, unrecoverable cost of the house is $23,400. Now we need to calculate the difference between the yearly appreciation of your house versus how much money you'll be making if you're investing that down payment into the stock market. On average, you know that you will make 12%, which on 60K would mean $7,200 a year, while a 2% appreciation on a $300,000 house would be around $6,000. The difference between $7,200 and $6,000 is a positive $1,200, which means that if the appreciation in the area historically has been 2%, and this is the number you're going for, you're better off investing the money in the stock market compared to uh, investing it in real estate. That difference of $1,200, we're gonna add onto the other costs we had. So your total unrecoverable cost will be $24,600. If you can find rent under this cost, you're better off renting. If you cannot find rent under this cost, you're better off buying. Now let's make the same example, but this time we're gonna use the national average and the picture is completely different. We're gonna leave all the rest the same so we know we have a starting unrecovered cost of 23,400 without considering the opportunity cost of capital. And now we know that appreciation in the area is 4.5% on average, which means that on a $300,000 house, we will be making $13,500 in appreciation every year. If we subtract this, from the gain we could potentially make by investing 60K into the stock market, we would come to a final result of negative $6,300. This basically means that on average, you're better off investing in real estate instead of the stock market because of what we mentioned earlier, the effect of leverage. Hence, this is why we're gonna subtract this negative number from that unrecoverable cost we had in the beginning, which will yield to $70,100. If you can rent under this number, you're better off. If you cannot rent under this number, you're worse off and you're better off buying. This rule is a simple generalization to a much more complex calculation and should not be followed at 100% by the letter, but it can definitely give you a good idea on how to compare buying versus renting. You also saw how the effects of leverage 
on average, make it better for the average person to buy instead of rent. But then again, it depends area on area and there are many other factors. In conclusion, this calculation uh, relies heavy on the last side of the equation, which is the returns of stock market versus real estate. So it is very important which numbers you're picking to calculate these numbers. And you cannot predict the future. So this is another thing you need to understand. You can play a game of risk management, but you will never know what will happen in the future. Talk about uh, real estate. Real estate appreciated much more than the 4.5% uh, that we saw historically in the past three years. I mean, real estate did even 10 plus percent in 2021. And at the same time, the stock market uh, last year did the negative numbers. So the numbers we saw are not always perfect. They become more precise if you have a more of a long-term mentality. I hope this video gave you some good insights. Let me know what you think, if you have some other ways to compare the two. And again, this is not financial advice. This is simply my opinion. Please always do your research. Thank you for watching. Ciao.